Hey guys, back with another daily video. The market just closed, it's Thursday, June 4th. It's 4.09 p.m. And looking at the board here, a lot of red on the board. It just wasn't a good day in the market. But the odd thing is, so unlike yesterday, there was a lot of green on the board and the semiconductor sector was red. Well, it looks like every other stock finally caught up today and went down in the red, whereas the semiconductor kind of traded sideways or was even in the green a little bit. But my tried and true AMD was also a little bit in the red. And it's been very stressful playing AMD this week. If you look at the chart, so when the market opened up this morning, pre-market, then the red traded a little sideways. And then 9.30 a.m., as soon as the market opened, it took off like a rocket. And so I thought, uh, this is gonna be the day where AMD finishes in the green. And you know we're above $53, so my puts are secure. I make a little bit of profit on my shares that I bought. So I was hoping that we get up to this point. Then we got up around 10, 10.30 a.m. And it was trading a little bit sideways, not going up as hard. So I said, that's fine. As long as it trades sideways for the rest of the day, I'm happy and stays that way for Friday. I'm looking good so far. And then 10.40 a.m. hits. Then it starts going back down, goes back to where it closed yesterday, keeps going down a little bit, and then basically trades sideways for the rest of the day. So it actually ended up in the red by just a little bit, uh, by less than a percent, less than half a percent actually. And then even after hours right now, it's still trading sideways. So right now, you know, I'm regretting selling the 53 put. If I had a 52, I would be fine because it looks like the 52 and a half level is a very strong support for AMD. Like it's having a hard time going below 52. If we look for the rest of the week, it really doesn't like going below 52 and some change. So instead of 53, 52, 51 puts, if I had 52, 51, 50, I'd be pretty uh, stress-free this week. But, you know, this this at the money put I sold, it's causing me a lot of anxiety this week. I don't think I'm going to do it again just because it's really bothering me. Uh, not that I don't want to get assigned shares. My main concern is what the market is doing right now. Because as I showed you yesterday in my last video, the queues are basically at all-time highs. And again, this morning, they got up there around all-time highs, maybe even got a little bit above, and then immediately got rejected and then traded in the red and then really dropped in the afternoon. So that's kind of what I went to see what's going to happen was is the market going to accept making new highs in the midst of a pandemic in the midst of rioting uh, and just overall bad news for the economy right more unemployment so as of today it doesn't look like the market like that so my fear is that if we're in another or if this is the beginning of another downturn I don't want to own any shares of anything right now because then I can ride the wave down and then get in at a lower price. So my thought process right now is, what do I wanna do um, for tomorrow? And actually at the end of the day, today, in the last about 10 minutes or so, I was watching it around 3.30, 3.45 to the close and see it popped a little bit from 52.43 and it started going up. I was hoping it would get up above 53 and close. Uh, in retrospect, I should have just sold early in the morning when it was above 53, but I thought it was going to trade sideways or keep going up a little bit. I didn't know it was going to come right back down. But my game plan, so what I thought I was going to do, I had a couple options this uh, afternoon. I said, you know what, I can milk a little bit more money out of this because I have 200 shares of AMD. So I could just sell a very short term covered call expiring tomorrow at the $53 strike or higher and just make like $39 times two contracts. So roughly $78 of money. And then if AMD goes above 53 tomorrow, I'll make that money, the premium, and then my shares will get called away. Or I could go a little bit higher and say 54, 55. So it's less likely that my shares would get called away, but I can make a quick extra 10 bucks, 26 bucks in premium for the week just for holding those shares. But then, the downside of that is let's say AMD really takes off tomorrow and let's say I had sold the $53 covered call, then maybe tomorrow end of day, if AMD closes, let's say at $54, well then I left $100 per contract or $200 since I have two contracts of money on the table. I would have left $200 on the table. So my strategy was either sell the covered call and just get out and be cash going into next week or i can watch the stock tomorrow and then just sell the shares off on my own 
meaning if tomorrow we get to like 53 and some change like we did today like let's say we get up to 5367 or let's just say 5350 to give a round number and just sell those shares off I would make similar money than selling at $53 a share plus the premium. Actually, I would probably make more money. So I think that's that's what I chose to do. I didn't do any covered calls at the end of the day today. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep an eye and I can even set a stop loss. I thought about setting a stop loss this morning when I went up above 53, because what I can do is once it breaks above 53, I can set a stop loss at $53. So if the stock ever goes back down to 53, it'll automatically sell it. And then I've essentially locked in profits at that point. But um, I guess it kind of, I got a little greedy, I think, because I didn't know that I was going to come back down. Um, you can also set trailing stop losses and you can set them for extra, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 cents, whatever you want to get a little bit more value out of the stock. But that's what I was kind of toying with as far as how I want to play this, because I, I really think based on what the market's done today and yesterday, I'm not liking what it's doing personally. You know, I feel like we're almost at a top. It feels like it. I may be wrong, but I, I, I don't want to have, right now I have a lot of money tied up in AMD between puts and shares, and which means a lot of my portfolio, or actually the vast majority of my portfolio is tied up in AMD right now. So I think I want to be cash again going into the weekend, just because if something does happen this weekend, like crazy bad news, or the market decides this is the top and it doesn't make sense to hit all time highs again in the midst of all this bad news, I don't want to be caught bag holding. So I think what I'm going to do is try and get cash, just be cash. Um, and then the other interesting thing was my puts that I have right now at 53, 52 and 51, they're all profitable for me right now. So even though my $53 put is in the money, I had sold this for a dollar eight. So right now I could buy it back for $77. So I'm actually profitable by $31 on this put, even though it's in the money. So I thought about doing that as well, because that's the only put right now, knock on wood, that I'm worried about. My 51 and 52 puts have been safe. Like I said, AMD really doesn't like to go below 52.50 or so. So that's a pretty strong support level right now. So the 53 put is the only one I'm concerned about. So I could early tomorrow I could just buy this put back and close out the position for a profit and then just hang on to the 51 and 52 and let them go to expiration tomorrow and I should be okay but right now I'm profitable on all three of my puts because this one I sold for 108 it's now at 77 the 52 put I sold for 67 it's now at 31 so I'm 50% or more profitable on this the 51 put I sold for 40 and it's right now at 12. So the one negative in my portfolio right now is actually my shares of AMD. Because my shares, I bought them at a cost basis of $52.95. And right now AMD is at $52.63. So let's just do a quick math. $52.95 minus $52.63. So I'm down 32 cents a share and I have 200 shares. So I'm actually down $64 on my shares. But if you add up all of my profits on my puts, I'm actually in the green because just remember this number 64. So I'm, I did 108 minus 77, right? So I'm profitable by $31 on the 53 put. I am profitable by, what is this? 67 minus 31, so it's $36 on the 52 put. And I'm profitable by 40 minus 12 so $28 on the 51 put. So I've I've made a profit of $95 on my puts and I've lost $64 right now at the end of the day on the stock. So I'm actually up by $31. So if I really wanted to be cash right now, first thing tomorrow morning, I could just close out all my puts, sell off all my shares and still be profitable. Now that's not a great return on my money for this week, it's only $31. But if I truly want to just be cash and not have any risk right now, I could do that. And it's, you know, a little bit of profit is always better than no profit or a loss. So that's what I'm kind of debating on. I'll probably think it over tonight, see what I want to do. We'll see how tomorrow goes. Like I said, I think what I'm going to end up doing is if AMD goes above 53, 
I'll probably just sell my shares off and then I may close out my 53 put and then let my 51 and 52 ride to expiration tomorrow, assuming AMD stays above you know, 52 and some change. If not, then I can think about closing out my 52s as well if it starts getting tested. But like I said, I really, you know, the other option obviously is just to get assigned the shares. Because if I get assigned my 53s, which is what it's looking at right now, I'll then own 300 shares of AMD at a cost basis of roughly a little bit under $53 a share. And then I can, you know, play it out next week and then see if AMD wants to pop to 54, 55, 56 or higher. The one interesting thing about AMD is like, it hasn't been making a lot of moves recently, meaning you can see before in the past weeks, it has jumped around a lot, whether up or down. The past couple of days, it hasn't moved a lot at all. It's kind of staying right in the middle of this Fibonacci level between 5084 and 5450. It, you know, some people may call this like a consolidation pattern where it's kind of like having all this built up energy and it's gonna make a big breakout soon. So hopefully that's a big break up, breakout to the upside and not to the downside. Um, so, you know, what I don't want to happen is I don't wanna sell off all my shares for a little bit of profit, not that that's a bad thing. And then this thing just pops up to like mid 50s or 60. Cause that's, if that happens, I would leave hundreds of dollars on the table. Um, Cause even if I own 200 shares, if AMD goes up by a dollar, that's $200 in profits. So, and AMD has been known to swing a dollar or two every day. So I don't know what AMD is doing right now. It's just kind of like trading very, very sideways. And I'm hoping for a big pop up. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how the market plays out tomorrow, but I'm gonna take it kind of, you know, hour by hour and see what happens. And I do think I wanna be cash. Micron again, crazy day today. Micron just popped again. It's trading in that low 50s now. Um, I don't want to get into Micron right now because I think we're already, you know, I, don't, I think I missed the boat already. So I'm, I'm kind of scared because I think we're going to lug down. But Micron popped. You know, Disney also continued to go up. IWM also kind of, IWM kind of peaked out. So IWM is also getting near its all time highs. So Again, it's interesting to see how the market's going to react to all-time highs uh, in our current environment. So if we take a quick look at IWM on Robinhood, so you can see just a one-year chart. Uh, we're not that close as QQQ, but IWM is like 168. Right now we're at 145. So actually we're not that close compared to QQQ. But it's just, you know, I was watching the market and IWM didn't really like getting this high. It felt like it, it, it felt like there was like a very strong resistance level up there and it kind of was bouncing around or bouncing above of it. I mean, if we look at IWM just today, it was actually up, well, now it's up 0.2% after hours, but all day, which is up and down, up and down, really trading sideways. And it, you know, all day it was only down, there was only a change of 0.2% in the red. Same thing, if we look at QQQ, you know, it only changed minus 0.7% all day. So it also traded very sideways. So the fact that these stocks have been going up or these indices, and then now they're trading sideways makes me wonder if this really is the top. Now, granted, you know, none, this is all just my personal opinion. I don't, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen or nobody knows what's going on, but it's just food for thought. And that's why I think I want to be cash going to next week. I don't want to hold any shares if this is the top. So a few people have asked me how they can get some technical analysis charts or how they can do TA. But I will tell you, there are so many different forms of technical analysis with moving averages, Fibonacci levels, Elliott wave theory, uh, you name it. So everybody does differently and everybody does what they like or what they believe in. And then some people don't believe in technical analysis at all. So one thing you can do is to kind of see other people's work because some of these people on this website do very in-depth and detailed research and work on this technical analysis way more than I could ever do or more than I even know about. So if you go to tradingview.com, again, I'm not affiliated with this website, but I think it's just a fantastic resource that aggregates a lot of different things that you may have to go to five different websites for, for five different things. But this website has everything all in one place. And it's also very visually appealing. I like the way it's laid out. I like that it has kind of a dark mode appearance, so it's easy on the eyes. But if you just go to tradingview.com, and then if you just type in this ticker, what you want to look at, so let's just say AMD, for example, 
And what you do, it'll take you to AMD's kind of homepage, if you will. So right off the bat, on the right sidebar, you'll have your own little personalized watch list of tickers that you add. Um, so you'll have to log in with an account if you want to have your watch list saved. But then for that stock, it'll tell you the details. So it'll tell you, you know, right now the market is actually open. So it'll tell you what the stock price currently is. So it'll tell you the days range of price value for the stock. It'll tell you the 52 week range for the stock and where it is in that range. It'll show you some very ge generic technical analysis, sell or buy indicators. So right now people are the analysts, so-called experts are saying it's more of a sell stock. And then you can make this bigger and get way more uh, information here. So basically you can do this for different time frames. So in the one minute, five minute, one month time frame, let's just say for one day, the oscillators are all saying it's a buy. Overall, it's a sell. The moving averages are telling you it's a sell. But you can even look at, like I said, the RSI is neutral right now. The momentum indicator says it's a buy. The MACD says it's a sell. So, you know, like I said, depending on what you believe in and what you like, it tells you what all the different indicators are saying for the stock. So it gives you a whole lot of information. I mean, it's way too much information than one person can process for one stock. And then if you want to do this for all the stocks in your watches or portfolio, it's, it's just overwhelming. But then also on the sidebar, you'll get the other information like volume, market cap, PE ratio. And then again, if you click more, you're going to get way more information about debt and dividends and percent changes and return on assets. So again, just way more data if you are curious and you want to look at it. And then also, I've mentioned this in my previous videos, but it also links the stock twits. So it has like a running kind of ticker or running feed of people that I've mentioned AMD in their uh, tweets. So, I mean, these are just quote unquote regular people. Um, so you gotta be careful about like pump and up schemes and whatever. And obviously not everybody here is accurate, um, but some people are also just trying to pump up the stock. So they'll tweet things out like, oh, AMD is going to 60 today. To try and get people to buy it but i just use this for information because some people actually post kind of valuable info like oh amd has a conference this evening at 4 p.m or tomorrow amd is going to reveal that they're making the chips for the new playstation so it's kind of i use it for news more than hype but there is more hype than there is news so you can just scroll through this you know if you're just kind of bored or while you're watching the stock you just want to see what people are saying about it it has a kind of running feed which is kind of interesting i, I like it because I don't have to go to Yahoo Finance and other you know, websites like Motley Fool to figure out the news for AMD. I can just kind of get quick tidbits of what's going on. And then in the kind of the main page, you get a quick glimpse of the chart for AMD. And then if you scroll down, this is my favorite part because people, users, other users on TradingView will actually post their technical analysis and their chart, um, how they charted the stock and, and what like they're predicting will happen. But again, you have to take everything with a grain of salt because nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. And like I said before, technical analysis is not a guarantee. But you can see that there's a lot of top authors, they call them, and you can choose to follow them because they'll probably be putting out consistent TA on a lot of the stocks. So for example, let's just look at you know some of these. Let's look at this one. It says, AMD, are you a short? So this one is not that detailed if you click on it. So he, this person has drawn the different technical analysis and I'm not sure what he's doing. I know this, I believe is the MACD. I think this might be the stochastic RSI. I'm not actually sure. And then it looks like he's drawing waves. So I think this is Elliott wave theory, but again, I'm not hundred percent on that. But you see, he hasn't written any sort of description. So this is not that useful for me, more because I'm a novice and I don't really understand what's going on, but maybe more advanced users or more people that are into TA actually understand what he's trying to show. But if we go back and look at other users, this one I saw last night and this guy or girl did a very good job about their TA. I mean, it looks very detailed. So there's a lot of, so what I like about it is there's a lot of notes that are written on the graph itself. So you kind of know what he's trying to show you. So you can see he's trying to show you a, a head and shoulders pattern, which he kind of outlined in the green. And then he also says that there's a cup and handle, which are all bullish indicators. And he's showing you kind of this uh, wedge pattern with 50 and 100 day consolidations. And then he's showing you this triangle pattern with his consolidation. So what I like most about it, and again, I'm just a novice, 
is he kind of explains everything here. So he's saying that AMD bounced off his 200 day and forms a symmetrical triangle and an inverse head and shoulders. And then he says it's very bullish, which is what I want to hear. <laughs> and then he's saying he thinks that AMD will break out and go into the 60s. And he's recommending, again, you know, this is this could be a pump and dump scheme. You don't know. So just take everything with a grain of salt. But he's saying go long now while the stock is below 55 for profits. And he's even suggesting um, plays that I guess he made or plays you could think about making. And he's saying buy 100 shares now and sell co covered calls on it. So he's saying buy 100 shares, sell October 1st, $65 covered call. But again, I mean, this is just his opinion, right? And this is not what I'm recommending you should do either. But I like this because he took some time to not only annotate the graph really well, but he also gave a description of what he's seeing and what he's trying to show and what that means, whether it's bullish or bearish. And then he even took a step further to give you some trade ideas. So this guy's interesting. You know, this might be somebody that I want to follow just because his TA looks a little bit more intricate and involved than some of the other TAs here. But you can scroll down and you can see all these people have posted their chart analyses. Um, they're not all up to date. Like this one was from May 26th, June 2nd. You know, this one was just the most recent one, uh, June 17th. But I really like it. And then again, you can see the technical uh, numbers here if you were interested. But I really like this feature of TradingView because it can show you the different technical analysis that people are doing. So here, actually, this Dr. Chelsea one, he was number one as far as top authors on AMD right now. So I actually looked at his graph as well. And um, it looks like he, he says notes to follow. So I guess he's going to write this up soon. But he also kind of shows a similar pattern where there's this triangle formation. And I think he's trying to show that there's consolidation in the prices. And then he thinks AMD's going to break out and uh, go higher. So that's interesting. And then obviously people can comment on it to see whether people will agree or disagree or give some feedback on their technical analysis. So it's just very interesting to watch and see how other people analyze stocks and then also just get you some trade ideas. But I also use this to kind of learn just to see what different people are doing and how they're using the different technical analyses. So again, this is tradingview.com. I'm not associated with the website at all, uh, but it's just one that I really like to use because there's a lot of information all in one website. So you don't have to go to, you know, 10 different websites to find 10 different pieces of information. So you can use this if you'd like to check out your stocks. Yep, that was my day today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Let me know what your plan is for this week. Do you have any positions open right now? And what are your plans for them? Let me know what you think. Do you think we're at the top or do you think we still have room to grow? Do you think we're gonna go to all time highs? I mean, personally, I don't think it makes any sense to me whatsoever, but that's just my opinion. I'm kind of a bear right now, but yeah, as always, happy trading.